<clears throat> Trigonometry, Chapter 5, Trigonometric Identities, Section 3, Sum and Difference Identities, Video 6, Using Sum and Difference Formulas, Example 2. This series is based on content from Pearson's Trigonometry 12th edition by Lyle Hornsby Schneider and Daniels. Let me see if there's a previous. Nope. In the previous video, we did some specific problems. We did find cosine, sine, and tangent of 75 degrees. And then we went through all the song and dance. Our writing 75 is 30 plus 45. Applied some sum and difference formulas. Excuse me, just some formulas. And eventually we got all of our answers. Tangent, we had to clean up quite a bit. And that's one type of problem that involves sum and differences. Another type is like this. Suppose cosine of alpha equals one third. Tangent of beta equals negative square root of three over 10. And alpha and beta are in quadrant four. Find the value of sine of alpha minus beta. You know the fact that I'm telling you the quadrant means that at some point we're going to have to decide whether a trig function is positive or negative. So just as a reminder, maybe, come on, just as a reminder, we are in quadrant four. And in quadrant four, who's positive? Cosine and its reciprocal secant. So when we come to getting trig functions for alpha and beta, Cosines are positive, sines are negative. Keep that in mind. All right. Since sine of a, since sine of alpha minus sine, excuse me, since sine of alpha minus beta equals sine of alpha cosine of beta minus cosine of alpha sine of beta, we only need the values of sine alpha, cosine alpha, sine beta, and cosine beta. And we currently only have cosine. That was given in the problem. We can find the remaining values using identities or diagrams. I'll demonstrate using identities. I encourage you to try using diagrams. And I'm going to change that now because I remember editing this video. Uh, I'll do the first one using identities. I'll do the second one using diagrams. So let's start with alpha. Now we know that cosine of alpha is one third and alpha is in quadrant four. So we know sine is negative in quadrant four and to find sine from cosine, we can use a Pythagorean identity. This is a classic game of connecting what we know to what we want to know. We know the value of sine, excuse me, cosine. We know the quadrant. We want to know the value of sine. Well, that's just a quick Pythagorean identity. Sine squared plus cosine squared equals one. Cosine is one third, so we replace that. Square the one third to get one ninth. Subtract one ninth from both sides carefully to get eight ninths. And then take the square root of both sides. Now remember, we knew sine was negative in quadrant four. Normally, this would be a plus minus. And we can simplify the square root by distributing it across the fraction. Then now we become three, and the square root of eight simplifies into two square root of two. So we now have sine of alpha. We have cosine of alpha too. We need both of those. But we also need sine and cosine of beta. Now, to find sine and cosine of beta, we got a slight problem. We were given tangent, and there's no tangent that directly ties, ta uh, there's no identity that directly ties tangent to either sine or cosine individually. Now, quotient identity does. We know that sine over cosine is tangent, but the problem with using that is that we would say sine over cosine equals this, and we still have too many unknowns. Plus, we couldn't say cosine is 10 and sine is squared to 3. Doesn't matter if it's negative. Both of those are outside of the range of cosine and sine. So there's no way that would happen. Let's get rid of this. All right, so what do we do? Well, we can use multiple identities. For example, we could turn tangent into secant using a, 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 a Pythagorean identity, reciprocate the secant to get cosine, and then use a Pythagorean identity to get sine. Or we could draw a diagram. I'm a big component, I'm a big proponent of drawing diagrams for trig problems. The only reason I did the identity flow back here is to remind you that that is an option for getting one from one trig function to another. But if you know a trig value in a quadrant, I would just draw a picture. So for beta, we're going to draw a diagram. We're going to draw a diagram of, why is there two similar slides here? We're going to draw a diagram for tangent of beta. Where's my, here it is. Tangent of beta equals negative square root of three over 10. Now, since beta there should be a picture here. There it is. Since beta is in quadrant four and tangent is y over x, we're going to let x equal 10 
and y equal negative square root of three. Why did I put the negative on the square root of three and not on the 10? Because we're in quadrant four where y is negative. So here's a picture of an angle. I could put a beta here. I didn't, but I will. Whose tangent is negative square root of three over 10. So this is a good picture. Now sine and cosine both involve the r, so we use the Pythagorean theorem. If we set up the Pythagorean theorem, we get r is the square root of 103. I encourage you to verify that that is correct. And since we have r, we can figure out sine and cosine directly. Sine of alpha is y over r. Where's my, there it is. Sine of alpha is y over r. Remember, r was the square root of 103. y over r ends up being negative square root of 3 over square root of 103. But if we rationalize the denominator by multiplying both sides by the square root of 103, we get sine of alpha is negative square root of 309 over 103. Now, if you're worried about simplifying the square root of 309, it's a good thing to worry about, but it literally just came from 3 times 103. And I apologize when we first came up with the square root of 103 back here. Where did we come up with it? There it is. When we first came up with the square root of 103, I didn't stop to see if it would simplify. I happen to know that 103 is prime, meaning that you can't break it down any further. So there's no way that you could simplify it. You could try it. And you, honestly, we should have, but it is simplified because 103 is prime, which means the square root of 309 can't simplify because the only product equal to it is a product of two primes, neither of which will simplify further. Now, for cosine of alpha, we have x over r. That's 10 over the square root of 103. But that ends up being, after rationalizing the denominator, 10 times the square root of 103 over 103. Let's go out some of these straight marks. All right. So we have sine of alpha and cosine of alpha. And now that we finally have that, we can find the value of sine of alpha minus beta. Remember, we were trying to find sine of alpha minus beta, which means we need sine of alpha, sine of beta, cosine of alpha, cosine of beta. But we have all four of those values. Here we have sine of alpha and cosine of alpha. And here we found, excuse me, zoinks. This is a beta discussion. Okay, I could pause the video, correct all the typos, and then redo the video, or I could just do this. All this time when I was saying alpha, I should have been saying beta. Because we were we drew a picture of beta. So the sine of beta is negative square root of, negative square root of 309 over 103. And cosine of beta is 10, oh, 10 squared to 103 over 103 after rationalizing the denominator. My apologies. If you caught that and was yelling at the screen, good job. Um, I guess you could call me a content creator. Or this is just videos from my classes. But um, sometimes things fly, over the, fly under the radar and don't get caught. Uh, I'm human. You're human. We all make mistakes. And if you ever catch a mistake in a video, you should make a comment and say, hey, there's something wrong here. I will fix it, or at least I'll comment that there's an error, and I'll give you credit for it. But I digress. We're finding sine of alpha minus beta, which means we need these four trig value functions. Here's the ones for beta. Here's the one for sine of alpha, and we were given cosine of alpha. So these two values plus these two values go into this formula and become this mess. I'm pretty sure these are correct because I did catch an error when making this video. But again, if you think something is wrong, let me know. Let's double check it. The betas were negative root 309 over 103 for sine. So sine beta is the last one. Okay, that's correct right here. And then cosine of beta was 10 root 103 over 103. Cosine of beta is right here. And that is 10 root 103 over 103. That's correct. The cosine of alpha is easy. That was given in the problem is one third. And that is one third. And then the sine of alpha, we had calculated earlier. I'm just double checking now. 
because now I'm now I'm paranoid that this whole video is garbage. Sine of alpha is negative two root two over three. Sine of alpha, very first one, negative root two, negative two root two over three. So that is correct. All right, so all four fractions are correct. And then we clean up the messes. Uh, specifically, let's erase these. Specifically, we, we have a double negative here that should become a positive. I don't see anything that reduces within each product. There's no factor on the top that reduces with a factor on the bottom. And the same thing over here. That's the only other thing I can see is that when we multiply these two square roots together, we can merge them. Two times 103 is 206. So we should get negative 20 root 206 over 309 plus root 309 over 309, which we can add because we have a common denominator. So that was a that was a very, very, very messy problem with a very, very, very messy answer. Truth be known, I um I improvised this problem. <laughs> Sorry for the pause. Uh Y'all are going to laugh at this. Uh, I had to drop the car off across the street to get worked on. Um, I forgot to leave them the keys. They're in my pocket. <laughs> Luckily, this video is pretty much over. Um, and uh, I've got to walk over there and give them the keys. So anyway, we got a really messy answer. And I'll be honest, I improvised this problem. I created the fractions at the beginning. I figured it was going to get kind of ugly. I'm going to ask you to try one. I'm going to ask you to try one. But... I promise you this one works better. And the reason I know it works better, excuse me, is because when you do the Pythagorean theorem on either of these, you don't have ugly square roots. Suppose cosine of A equals negative three-fifths and secant of B is equal to negative 13 twelfths. If sine of A is greater than zero and sine of B is less than zero, find tangent of A plus B. Now, I am asking you to pause this video and try it, but let's think about this real quick. For A, we know cosine is negative because I gave you the value, and sine is positive, so that narrows it down to a quadrant. For B, secant is negative and sine is negative, so that narrows it down to a quadrant. We're being asked to find tangent of A plus B, and the formula for tangent of A plus B only needs the values of tangent of A and tangent of B. So your mission is to, in the right quadrants, find the values of tangent of A, tangent of B, substitute them. Pause the video, give it a try. Spoiler alert, if you haven't paused the video and tried to work it yet, here come the solutions. The value of tangent of A plus B depends on the values of tangent of A and tangent of B. Based on the given information, A is in quadrant 2 and B is in quadrant 3. Using identities or diagrams, get tangent of A equals negative 4 thirds and tangent of B equals 5 twelfths. So tangent of A plus B equals the sum of the tangents over 1 minus the product of the tangents, which I believe equals negative 33.56. The way things have been going this morning, it would not surprise me if there was an error in the solution. So if you suspect the answer is different, please, please, please let me know.